video is going to be a get ready with me. I actually have to just run a couple errands today, so I figured I would film a little bit. I actually picked up a couple new things. Well, actually really like, yeah, like just a couple new things from ColourPop. Nothing really crazy. Guess what I finally picked up again in, into my collection? The ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. I have been thinking about repurchasing this so many times and I finally just got it because I really was missing this in my collection so I picked that up and then I also picked up the new uh bronzer stick I picked up the lightest shade in the shade Laguna Beach I just really was curious about trying this and then I just picked up some of the newer lip formulas that uh ColourPop reformulated so I picked up one of the matte lips one of the ultra blotted lips and one of the new uh ultra glossy lips so I'm not sure if I'm going to try these today I might because I'm just running some errands so I might just throw the gloss on or something we'll see so I'm just going to get ready with you guys I have quite a bit to talk about today um so I'm just going to start with like priming my eyes and everything and I don't know why I keep on filming uh get ready with me's with ColourPop palettes but it just seems to be what i will be using when <laughs> I'm filming a get ready with me so I want to go into the not a box of chocolates palette today so that's what we're using so sorry but it is my most purchased and most uh I have the most palettes from ColourPop so I like to use them when I can so <coughs> so first off so I live in in Long Island New York and this past week, you cannot turn on the news or look at the newspaper or anything without hearing about the um, Gilgo Beach Killer. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, Gilgo or Giglo. I really butcher the name, I am sorry, but if you guys didn't know about this case, um, he's basically a Long Island serial, serial killer. It's kind of crazy that he was finally caught. Um... I think he killed uh, these three girls like 10 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, back in like 2013, and he finally was caught. So that has been literally the craze this week. It's been all over the news, not just in uh, New York, but everywhere, like CNN, ABC, everywhere. So it is kind of craziness when you live very close by to someone that was murdering sex workers so it's just it's kind of bonkers and a bit surreal um but I'm glad it was finally uh that he was finally caught but like it's just crazy like I don't even know what to say about it because it's so crazy but I'm glad it finally happened so now I'm gonna go into this guy and also, I kind of wanted to touch a little bit on kind of just YouTube, YouTuber drama and stuff like that. So, we'll see how much time I have to talk about certain things. I don't know why I'm, like, tripping on my words already. So, I think I'm going to stick with, like, some of the, like, just these warmer tones today. And then, I think for the lid, I'm just going to go into the shade Still Bitter because I kind of wanted to use that shade today. So, I'm going to go into... English is hard. I'm going to go into uh, praline first. If I can find my mirror. It really is amazing. Okay, it's right here actually. Um, how disorganized some things get. So, y'all know if you use makeup on a daily basis, how much of a struggle it is sometimes. But apparently I can't even speak today so there's that too so anyway I mostly wanted to talk about James Charles Jeffree Star Tati Westbrook Manny MUA and Colleen Ballinger and I know Colleen Ballinger isn't a beauty influencer but she kind of can compare to this situation so with James Charles I, I literally, all of these people, I am neither near or there with them. 
here or there with them. I could take them or leave them. I really don't like any of them at all. I've never really liked them. I was into, um, <coughs> Manny MUA and Tati Westbrook for, like, probably a year or so. And then right after Manny basically said, um, if you don't know how to use Morphe, you don't know how to do makeup, that's when I just decided to stop uh, following him or supporting him or anything like that. And then with Tati, with the whole, like, Kim Kardashian review that she did, it was already, like, shady that she did that review after the freaking contour stick fell out of the bottom and she literally, um, what was so stupid is that she didn't even edit that out, but also, like, she didn't even say anything about it. So that was that. But also, I will have to say the biggest instigator of everything is Jeffree Star. And I don't care what people say when they're like, oh, but he's so honest and he's so this, he's so that, and he's the only one. Like, I'm glad the only thing that I can say about him, because I really just still think he's such a problematic person, um, the only thing I can say about him is that I'm glad he is bringing attention to the whole Colin Ballinger situation and I'm also glad that he is, you know, still reminding people of what James Charles has done. But at the same time, like, he just can't let it go. Like, the way that he says it. Like, he could say, I don't associate with this person anymore. Why are you asking me about him? I don't want to talk about him. It would be way more effective for him to say that than to be like, he belongs in prison. He's this. He's that. So, <sighs> oh my god, I'm so sick of this crap already. <laughs> So anyway, um, I'm, I'm just so sick of my friends sometimes. Like, literally, my friend has been talking about this one thing that happened at the barbecue for, like, the past five days already. I don't know. I don't care anymore. It's just, it's so ridiculous. I don't know why we can't just drop it at this point. It was literally five days ago already. So anyway, um, I wanted to stick with like the warmer tones today. Um, and I just forgot how good these mattes blend. The thing is that James Charles is never going to be uncanceled like he wants to be. And honestly, I don't think he has literally suffered at all. I think the the reason why he's trying to get back into the limelight, get back into um, the popularity that he had before is because I don't think he can take any negative things that are said about him, but he's the one that put himself in this position. He's the one that was mes messaging underage guys. But at the same time, at least he says that he did it. Maybe he thinks he shouldn't be held accountable anymore because, honestly, I think Colleen Ballinger is never going to face any consequences. And I don't think she's going to be as canceled as James Charles is. But in the meantime, she's already canceling her shows and stuff. She has not said one word made one video, one response, nothing about anything that's been said about her and except for copy striking, copyright striking H3's channel. So, which that's a whole nother big deal. But with James Charles, like, you're never going to be uncanceled, girl. Like, that also, but the the thing is that, like, why is it that Jeffree Star could redeem himself, and he's the one that outed James Charles and exposed him. I'm not saying that 
someone shouldn't have said something. And I understand if Jeffree Star wanted to be a voice for the victims and for the people, but the way that he did it was the thing that was very problematic because he said it and then Tati Westbrook makes a video about it and they both just kind of really ruined him. And even though what he did is really bad and of course like I think it's wrong, it's not their job to be like the social media police and expose him the way that they did. I feel like if anybody was exposed that way, they would crawl in a hole and want to die too. And I'm not saying that what he did is not wrong because it was kind of crazy and but at the same time like I think that James Charles has kind of learned I mean honestly it's ridiculous because like if anybody else did this in the normal world they would be fucking arrested and put in prison most likely but also like James Charles was saying like and again, I'm not making ex excuses. I could care less about James Charles. I'm just saying the way that it was done and how, uh, you know, they went about it. I think that's why the internet was so fast to just cancel James Charles to begin with. And again, of course, it should be talked about. It's not like someone shouldn't have said something. It needs to be said. But damn, like they really just, I, for Jeffree Star and Tati Westbrook to act like they're like holier than thou was ridiculous to me because Jeffree Star, again, is so problematic. He's a freaking racist and I don't even know how the hell I decided to support him once and buy his liquid lipsticks. I was like, I'm never buying a damn product from him again. And I ended up decluttering them. I mean, I used them for a couple of years. And honestly, they were really good lipsticks. But, like, I feel like in the beauty community, it's kind of easy to... I don't... Like, there's so many problematic brands and so many problematic CEOs out there that it's just hard to navigate sometimes because I feel like there's so much controversy about like trying one product that it's like when you're thinking about trying that product it's like you have to like look up like the whole history about like this brand and are they problematic do they have a problematic CEO did they say something racist in the past blah blah and there's Nothing wrong with being aware of certain issues and stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I just feel like, you know, CEOs of brands really need to just be a little bit more professional about things. I think sometimes, and I'm not saying they're not allowed to have an opinion, but when you're running a business and running a brand, it's a little bit better if you just concentrate on your brand and on your marketing and on your products than just go and have your, like, political and social and crazy opinions about things because you just, it literally just gives the brand more exposure. But it can be in a good way or in a bad way, so... Yeah, I don't really know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, that's what I was wanting to cover is that James Charles did sit down and make like an entire video after Jeffree Star and Tati Westbrook exposed his thing to the whole world. And again, I don't think that it's these... Um, what I'm saying is that I don't think it's these YouTubers' responsibility to do that because with Jeffree Star he was just an instigator and I feel like he used everyone then he used Laura Lee he used Manny MUA he used James Charles he used Tati Westbrook he just wanted to infiltrate 
their audiences so he could gain more followers or he could gain more exposure or he could, you know, infiltrate their audiences to get him more followers. But he doesn't do it for the clout, even though he's like opening another store and he has nothing to do with Morph. I think he has nothing to do with Morphe anymore. I don't even know about that situation at this point. I don't remember if he had said anything about it after they closed. But, like, at the end of the day, everything is business with these people. Honestly, like, I have really taken a step back on trusting certain influencers, especially the bigger influencers, because at the end of the day, all they want to do is make money. They just want to take your money. So, like... You have to think about whether or not you're going to trust that person and whether or not you think that the products are good enough to spend your, your hard-earned money on. So just keep that in mind. And I'm not saying, like, you need to do what I'm telling you. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But, like, I'm just saying just be more aware of what these people have done in the past because... Like I said, I think he just used everyone, Jeffree Star, and also, I also thought it was weird that he even befriended James Charles in the first place and Tati Westbrook. I bet Tati Westbrook didn't really want to be friends with him. Um, then everybody acts like Tati's like the, the angel in this situation, which I don't think that she is, so... Let me just go grab my sponge because I feel like I've been talking for a while already. So, yeah, I'm saying in the end, they all played a role in this. And it was like watching a, a freaking reality show with these beauty influencers. And it just became, like, ridiculous. But I also hate that Jeffree Star acts like he's, like, holier than thou in all these situations. Like... It's because he apologized for what he did. Not that James Charles didn't. And he did take accountability for it at the time. But I think now he's still kind of misunderstanding that people are not going to forget what you did. I mean, some people, for, like, they act like Jeffree Star is forgiven and blah, 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 and whatever. I mean, I would never, ever support him, but, like... Hold on one second. But, yeah, everybody is saying that James Charles wants to get back into the spotlight because his beauty line is coming out soon. And, honestly, I could care less. I think it looks really stupid. So, obviously, I never would support that either. I bet he's going to be just fine. So, okay. So, now I'm going to go into the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. I'm so excited to use this again. You know what's annoying, though, is that... Um, Ulta does not carry this shade in store. I don't think they even have it online. But this is the lightest shade of the ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer. I think that's all I'm going to take for now because I don't really want, like, too much. But this was, like, the only tinted moisturizer that I actually used up before. Besides, like, the Urban Decay one that I had, like, a while back. And I think I used up my NARS one, too. But since then, I have not been able to use up another tinted moisturizer. But I just wanted this back in my life for the summertime. And I'm just so glad that I have it again. So, anyway, um, what are your thoughts on that? I just think that there's, like, a double standard with a lot of these influencers that if you, like, say anything about you, their favorite YouTuber, then it's like you can't have, like, an opinion about it. But honestly, a lot of these things that some of these influencers have done are very serious. Okay, so this doesn't really have that much coverage. It is very sheer from what I remember. I think I might need a little bit more. Or I could just put on some concealer in those areas. But I think I want to put on a bit more. 
I didn't realize like this actually is like the coverage of a tinted moisturizer because what's so funny is that now I feel like we've become so used to tinted moisturizers having way more coverage than they used to because the tinted moisturizers that I used to use never had this much coverage before. But this one, like, is such a nice buildable formula, so let's just put on a bit more. Yeah, that's better. But this one, it just is so hydrating, and it shears out to be so lightweight that no matter how much you put on, it's really not going to look, like, too much. Like, it still looks like my natural skin, and my natural skin is peeking through quite a bit with this so it just feels so ridiculously comfortable on the skin so yeah I don't want to waste time talking about these people anymore because they're all problematic people I also don't care for Manny MUA still I'll never buy any of his stuff like I literally don't care and I just don't really like him so I'm just going to use the same concealer I used yesterday I just can't be bothered to pick out another one I'm just going to use my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I do have to stop by um, my job today because I actually have to pick up a couple of things for my mom and my brother because they decided to go to Lucky Brand yesterday. Of course, they always go on the days that I'm not there. Not that I'm really working that much at all. I'm like barely working. But I also want to talk to my manager about giving me some more hours this week because I'm or next week because I need some hours next week so anyway so I saw this weird thing in my Ulta uh, account for my card and also my Sephora card so I was checking on like the balances just to see how much I had to pay off and for some reason, when I was looking at when the payments were due, they both said that the payments were due on 7-Eleven, which I had already made two payments for the last billing cycle in the month of June for uh, 7-Eleven. So, like, the way the billing cycles work is that if you have a payment due on 7-Eleven, that will be like for the month of June and like you'll have to pay off like your statement balance um, because once you get the the bill for the balance then that's what you owe to pay off for that month if that makes sense so like let's say if my balance for June was $15 and I pay off $15 and then whatever I buy after that will roll into the next to, to the next billing cycle in August, which I think is like August 11th. But for some reason, even after I made my two payments before that for Ulta and Sephora before 7-Eleven, because I always pay the minimum payment before it's due, um, it was showing for both, which I had a feeling this was an error, for Sephora and Ulta, they were both telling me that I had another minimum payment due of $30 by 7-Eleven. So I was like, what the heck? Like, why are they both saying that? And it turned out to be an error for both of them because I um, messaged Ulta and Sephora because they have their own messaging center and they usually get back to you pretty quickly, like within uh, a day. And Ulta said that I had another month to pay off this balance, even though I had already set up the payment for Ulta because I got nervous about um, that payment being due since I had made a purchase at Ulta, like 7-9. So that's why I got a little bit nervous about it. Because I was like, is it telling me that payment is due for that purchase that I made but then they messaged me back and they said <coughs> that the due date was corrected and that now I'm finally using the pretty fresh moisturizer with this 
again and they are literally like a match made in heaven together with the pretty fresh tinted moisturizer it just looks so pretty i'm probably gonna wear this like every day this week because i missed it so much i think when i first got it i wore i wore it like every single day so anyway um so i was panicking about that last night and then it said that um they said that it's not due until 8 11 but i had already set up the pay payment for ulta so i couldn't cancel it so i was like i might as well just pay that anyway so okay so the blending is not 100 percent the greatest but whatever i really could care less um, so now I'm just going to go into the lightest shade in the palette, which is Champagne Truffle. I might smudge a bit of oat chip on the lower lash line. We'll see what I'm feeling. So that was annoying, but at least I got that resolved and I don't owe anything until um, August. And it's not like my Ulta and Sephora balances are really that high, so... I have until August to pay that. Um, so also, I've just been watching Entourage still. I did watch a couple of movies with my boyfriend, and me and my mom are almost done with season seven of NYPD Blue. Me and my boyfriend actually finally finished King of the Hill, like the entirety of King of the Hill. I think it took us like a good year to finish because you know sometimes we don't always get along or like I'll come later or blah 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 sometimes I'll, I'll end up not seeing him or sometimes I'll stay home so like there's always some things that affect us you know finishing something but we finally finished it like two days ago I was like I can't believe we finally finished that whole thing Yeah, so I decided to smudge Oat Chip on the lower lash line. Okay, I guess I'm going to talk about this situation that happened like a couple of days ago at the barbecue because now I'm getting frustrated. Actually, no. You know what? I'm not going to. So anyway, I, I just don't want to waste the time. And also, like... I, I just think it needs to be resolved by me, so I'm just not going to say anything. But that looks really, really pretty. Not that anyone really watches my videos anyway, but I'd rather not. Whatever. Okay, that is not the shade that I went into. Hold on one second. Okay, so now I'm just going to line my waterline with the LA Girl Liner in brown. So, I also... Jesus fucking Christ. It looks like it's about to pour outside. And it's thundering, so... I swear, every time I want to get out of the house, this happens. But whatever. I'm still gonna go. I'll just wear a raincoat. So, um, also, I didn't think Indiana Jones was that great. Like, it was entertaining and good because of Harrison Ford, but, like, I'm glad that, um, the franchise has ended at this point. I mean, of course, like, everyone lives for the nostalgia and everything, but at the same time, I'm glad it ended where it did, so. And also, I don't really have, like, really any set plans this week. i am really just been seeing my boyfriend and then just, like, staying at home. Because I really am starting to try and find a job in my field at this point because... I really do need to get a job very soon to have some financial stability. So, yeah, I have to concentrate on that too. 
So now I'm just going to use the Level Up Mascara from ColourPop. Um, so I have to like, I applied to some places last night and I've messaged some people. I also need to talk to my chair again. There's just like a whole bunch of crap. So yeah, that's mostly what I'm doing today. I felt like there was something else I wanted to talk about, but now I can't remember. So I'm just gonna finish my mascara off camera. We'll just finish off with using the new product. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the bronzer stick that I picked up. This is the shade Laguna Beach, like I said. Every time I say that, it makes me think of the old reality show Laguna Beach. I used to be a huge fan of... <laughs> of that show it's like my favorite reality show i watched it all the time so if y'all know mtv was like in its prime then when that show was out that was like one of the biggest reality shows of like the 2000s so just freaking loved it okay so now we're gonna go into the cream bronzer stick i actually have never used a cream bronzer before but for some reason i was very intrigued on trying this i think this is now possibly my fourth bronzer purchase this year I got the house labs one and the Pat McGrath this might be my third I'm not really sure if I picked up any bronzers before that but I think all I'm gonna do I think I'm just gonna use like this small powder brush and I'm just gonna swipe it on like so like probably like that much and then I'm just gonna blend it out I'm not gonna let it sit on the skin or anything I'm just gonna blend it out but I thought it blended out pretty nicely like I tried it out yesterday and I liked how it blended out like just like randomly after I received it I kind of just like tried and um see it blends out really nicely I just like swiped it on my face and just like tried to blend it out on top of what I was already wearing and it blended out pretty nice so I'm just going to chisel it out and just blend it out where my cheekbones are and I think it blends out really nicely it's a pretty dry formula though like it's not like that creamy so you kind of have to work with it a little quickly and it's kind of leaving a bit okay there we go that's better there's not a line anymore and then I'll just, you know, pat it in with my beauty blender, I guess. I feel like this side needs just a tiny bit more, like right here. I already feel like that's too much, but whatever. And I'm just going to blend it up like that. Hopefully it doesn't look like a straight up line, but whatever. The blush is going to cover it anyway, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But yeah, I think that looks really nice right so I'm just gonna do a little bit up here and I'm gonna do the same thing and just use a brush and I think that looks really nice you know what's funny is that like I never thought that like a cream bronzer would be something that I would be like into but I've always been curious to try one because I've I've tried cream blushes I've tried cream highlighters and I really do like, I like cream blushes more so than cream highlighters. I'm more of a powder highlighter type of person. The only type of cream highlighters I really do like are the Super Shock highlighters from ColourPop because they're stunning. And I also love their, their other sticks, like their cream blushes and also their cream highlighters in the stick form. I've always been a big fan of. And I love how they're like bringing those back and stuff, which I actually really do appreciate because I've always been a huge fan of those. So I just think they're kind of over, they're underrated, not overrated. They're very underrated. So I'm just connecting that. And I think that looks really natural and really nice because I'm blending it up into the hairline. And I think it looks really pretty. And I feel like when you do that, then you don't really get like that, like huge shadow on your face of like, um, of how, um, 
I just feel like it's going to be a little bit more difficult to blend on the chin because I'm pretty bad about the way I blend my bronzer on my chin, but that actually looks... Okay, I'm kind of a big fan of this because I never thought how I would feel this... I never thought I would feel this way about cream bronzers because I always was like hesitant to try them. I'm like, I don't know if I would really be into it. But I actually really like how it looks. That looks really nice. Okay, I'm going to use this more on an everyday basis. I just want to do a tiny bit on my neck just to like bring down some of the color. Just to give myself some color. You know what? That blends out really nicely. Okay, I like this. I'm a fan. I am a fan. It looks very natural and very pretty, so, okay. I mean, I might need some more, but honestly, I don't want to go too overboard because I want it to look really natural today. It's not like we're shooting for the stars today. We don't need anything too crazy. Okay, as I'm wearing the Beneath the Stars shirt, from Lucky Brands. I think that's pretty funny. And then for my blush, I'm going to use the shade Cottage Life. Um, Because I wanted to use another one of the uh, sticks today. And this one's kind of like a soft peach color. It's not too orange. And I'm just going to wipe it on my brush. I'm going to put a little bit on here too. Because it doesn't really sit on the skin. It blends in pretty nicely. And I think those mesh together really well. And I'm just going to put on a bit more because I need a bit more. I'm so mad it's about to like thunderstorm. I don't understand like why every time I want to go somewhere it always has to thunder. All right, I need more than that. I don't know why this is like dissolving so much right now. Um, I want it to mesh with the bronzer, you know, not just make the bronzer like evaporate. So, all right, I guess that's better. Whatever. I'm not going to put it on my brush because I don't think that did anything. I'm just going to swipe it on and then blend it out. Okay. That looks way better on this side for some reason. And I love the ColourPop brushes. I use them like every day. I love this blush brush. I use it for everything. It works great with cream products too. That's why I use it quite often. I love their brushes. I was actually interested in picking up their new cream blushes, like at least one shade, but I really cannot spend money on makeup right now. Like I got these products before, um, like this order took like a week and a half to come. It took quite a while. Um, I ordered it like the beginning of July. I think it was like July 6th or 7th and it finally came yesterday. So I guess that's not that long. It's like 10 days, but still like ColourPop usually comes within not even like a week anymore. This one took like five or six days to process and then it took like a week to come. So it's fine. It's not a huge deal. It's not like it was essential for me to get these products right away. So, okay, that looks good. I don't know why it took me a century to blend this out. I need a little bit more up here, though. For some reason, it's kind of shearing out. I don't know why. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's way better. That blended out really nicely. And then for my highlight, I want to use the ColourPop um, pressed powder highlighter in the shade You're Glowing. So I just wanted to use that one today. This one is so stunning. So I'm just going to put that on. What else? What else was I going to say? Yeah, so I wanted to try their cream blushes, but I'm going to put a hold on trying any new makeup right now. I'm actually waiting for my order from Clarity Cosmetics because I did order um, one of the eyeshadow palettes, two of the blushes, and one of the lippies. So I'll have those to try 
for this month. Um, but there's really, like, only, like, three other things that I'm interested in. I'm still interested in a couple of things from Sephora. I'm interested in the new Bella Butte Bar palette because I actually really do want to try Bella Butte Bar. They're kind of the other, the next eyeshadow brand that's on my list. So since like ColourPop isn't really releasing like too many collections and uh, products that I really want to try lately, I've been giving myself more of an opportunity and chance to try the brands that have been on my list for a while. So, and I think I've been rotating my eyeshadows pretty well because I've been using the Natasha Denona Yucca palette and the, or Yucca palette, whatever, whatever way you call it. And the, um, I feel like I've been talking for a century. I need to get out of here. Um, and the, um, Nomad Akavango Safari palette quite a lot. So I wanted to go into a palette that I hadn't used in a little while and just something that I know is like one of my tried and trues. So, okay, so that looks pretty. I like that. That looks really nice. And then I'm just gonna uh, spray my face and then we'll do the lip. Okay, and now for the lips. I think I'm just going to go in with my House Labs lip crayon. And then I think I'm going to put the, the ultra glossy lip on top from ColourPop. I need to get out of here because it's going to start raining soon. And of course it doesn't lighten up until later. And I just threw on my brow wash gel on my brows. So I have to go to Ulta and pick up my cellar water. And actually I'm going to get another one of the e.l.f. hydrating moisturizers. Because I really enjoyed that one. And I much prefer that one over the Inculus one now. I might just get rid of the Inculus one. It's just too strong for my skin at this point. Oh, and I have to order it for pickup because you get 10% off if you do pickup. Hold on one second. Okay, and now I wanted to try the ultra glossy lip that I got. So this is a shade Sugar Cookie, and I believe they had this shade a while back. Like, um like years ago, but I want to try this one today. Oh, that's so pretty. It has a nice vanilla scent to it too. That's pretty, but I still prefer the, um, excuse me, the so glassy ones because these kind of feel similar to them now, but the So Glassy ones are, like, so good from ColourPop. Those are definitely my favorite gloss formula that they have. So this is really pretty. I really like that. That's a really pretty shade. And, yeah, that's it. That looks so pretty, actually. Um, But I'm just so glad that they changed the applicator back to a doe foot because the older ones, they changed the applicator because it used to be just a regular doe foot, and then they changed it to, um, to a brush, and I hated that, because it made the, the gloss, like, so goopy on your lips, and it would never, like, apply evenly, so I'm just really glad that they changed it back to a doe foot applicator, and this feels really lightweight, not as lightweight as the so glassy ones, but it made my lips look really glossy and really pretty, so, yeah, that's it, so here are the eyes, the cheeks, 
and the lips. And I really like how this look turned out. Just a simple everyday look for me. And I love this palette. And I really like the bronzer. I think the bronzer is really nice. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Oh my god, I brought the blush down so much. Let's kind of take that down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. I don't know how the heck I made it so low. Probably because it's just so dark out I couldn't really see. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram at cbw819 and check out my Poshmark at the same handle. I need to get out of here before it starts pouring. It's probably going to start pouring when I'm out. So yeah, bye!